been invited to the Neverland called hell. It's much too warm for me, don't like the heat down there. And I looked you in the face so many times before. And that's why I'm so fast to show him to the door. The wannabe, rake, 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 rake the Let me, let me. Uh, is this cool or what? It's the Conalingus move. Oh my god, this new Exorcist movie is trash. David Gordon Green is a hack. Why does he have to make everything into a joke? It wasn't always like this. You know, this got me thinking. Years ago, I made a promise. It's a hazy memory at this point, but I think I was enjoying a vintage toilet wine that CV-18 had cooked up. It tasted of salt and copper. A guard was forced to confiscate it and took pity on me, giving me a bottle of Buffalo Trace, saying I shouldn't be drinking whatever 18 was making. He's probably right. I asked him, I said to him, what could I do to possibly repay such kindness? He told me I should cover a game. I would have put that video into production immediately, but I couldn't. You see, this man handed me a copy of a game called Geist on the Nintendo GameCube. You might notice that I don't have a GameCube. I'm not sure I've ever even played a GameCube in my life. The GameCube was Nintendo's answer to Sony's PlayStation 2 and would hit a couple of months before the Xbox. I will say, controversially, that I think it's better than the Nintendo 64. At least the controller is, even though it has three weird little buttons up here and... Nintendo was on some shit. We're talking that native folk medicine shit. The GameCube didn't do as well as the PS2 or the Xbox. In fairness, PS2 had had more games, and Xbox had a game that made console shooters viable by streamlining FPS gameplay by putting it in a cage it struggled for over a decade to escape. Please leave a comment about how Halo is the best because your engagement is profitable to the Department of Special Corrections. Comments about Halo support the prison labor industry. The 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution allows comments about Halo. Obviously, I don't have a GameCube, and my original attempts to play this game were stymied by troubles with emulation. It turns out that if you eventually get a decent PC and brute force the game into behaving itself, guess what? It works. Geist is a first-person puzzle shooter developed by Endspace, who may end up on this channel again if I ever decide to cover Duke Nukem Time to Kill or Land of the Babes. And you know how I usually go on about how a company got killed by a much bigger, more malicious company? Well, Endspace was an independent game studio working on contracts from big names like Nintendo, and one sad day in 2016, the studio closed its doors, with very little details as to why. Maybe they just ran out of money. You either die from running out of money, or you get absorbed into a larger entity and lose your own identity and then eventually run out of money. Everything I can find about Geist, however, seems to praise the game, so I'm excited to dive in. What could be better for Halloween? No, stop with the fucking sequels! Join me as I slowly freeze to death and keep an old promise. If you're out there, I didn't forget. I'm running this through Dolphin. If Nintendo has a problem with that, they should port this game to newer systems. I can already see the monkey's paw curling and imagine them porting it to the Switch and charging 40 bucks for a badly emulated version with gyro aiming. Fuck you, Nintendo. Already, this game has me on board because in some ways it's making my life easy. Like with a widescreen mode on a console that ran in standard definition. You're gonna see some occasional frame dips, but they're nothing compared to being able to render the thing at 1080p in widescreen. Also, the game had some performance issues even on the hardware it was intended for. The game opens with a shot of helicopters flying over an undisclosed location. Raimi, Uliayo here. I've attached the latest intel on the Vox mission. As you already know, Tom Bryson has been working undercover at a Vox weapons facility in a remote area of southern France. Oh, no shit, we're back to France for this game too? On the surface, it appears to be a normal lab site, but infrared telemetry suggests a massive underground complex. We have reason to believe that Vox is potentially developing a chemical or biological agent there. That was enough in the 2000s to get a military operation off the ground, so here's what we know. There's funny stuff going on at the Vox Corporation's secret base. They're sending in John Ramey, because calling him John Carpenter would be too on the nose. They chose instead to name him after Ted. <laughs> no, it's Sam. We all know it's Sam. Weird that they gave him Bruce Campbell's chin. About three days ago, we received a garbled communication from Bryson. We cleaned it up as best as we could, and were able to make out the word virus, and what sounds like the word demon. But the jury's still out on that one. Is it just me, or does this game look decent for something on a 6th gen console? The cutscenes are really well done, and the facial animations are better than Starfield. Let's go inspect and see if that fish has been hit. Oh. What's going on, Raimi? Uh, yeah, sure. This man is nice enough to teach me all of my controls before we start fighting. We see some science being done until one of the scientists gets killed as we breach. 
It's about time. For a GameCube title in 2005, these graphics and this animation work are fine. Not spectacular. The characters even have a little special handshake they do. Maybe the graphics aren't top of the line. I mean, Doom 3 came out on the Xbox the same year, through some porting magic that's only available to id Software Android that would dream of electric sheep if he was bound by the mortal construct of sleep and practitioner of forbidden arcane engineering, John Carmack. It looks like it should have come out in 2002-ish, I think. I haven't even started playing and this game has me in a good mood. Yes, Remy. Okay, aside from this here, when you talk to a character, they read the same canned line over and over while you have to read the subtitles. I have to use my PDA to download some data. What's going on, Remy? I have to use my PDA to download some data. <laughs> yeah, that's an evil virus, all right. You can tell from all the flagella. Another wild detail that this game does that it probably doesn't need to is showing what Remy is doing down on the bottom left of the screen. Just as I'm asking, when does the shooting start? What's going on, Remy? You have a gun, now it's time to use it. Goddamn right, let's go. You get the sense that Raimi isn't a soldier. That's because he's not. The manual says he's one of the leading minds in biology and chemistry. You and Bryson are best friends. That part I didn't need to be told because they covered that with the handshake. There's little details you can glean from the character designs, like everyone has their flashlights on all the time and Raimi is bisexual. Shut up, that's not a battle scar, he's a scientist. You're told to take cover and not shoot yourself in the foot, which is a real possibility when the aiming is this weird. The auto-aim is sticky and a little awkward, and no, I can't turn it off, I tried. It's not a huge deal right now because the soldiers go down with one pistol shot and hardly any blood. There's still blood though, this dude here gets crushed by a vat. This was, at the time, one of the very few games to come out on a Nintendo console with an M rating. Like before the Switch, where it's got ports of the new Doom games and MK11, M rated games were taboo for Nintendo. Like you had Conker's Bad Fur Day and the original SNES port for Doom, but they were so rare that most articles I found about the subject listed the Game Boy Advance version of Max Payne. To make any kind of sense of it, I need to go back three years. Back to the night the pain started. The enemies in Geist go down quick and have hilariously over-the-top death animations where you can see the smoke from their guns spinning around as they do a flip. Like, the control is awkward, but I already kinda love this. Hold. Cover me. Move forward. Cap says the bridge is fine, then the bridge is fine. Dude's wearing 100 pounds of metal armor. If he can cross it... <laughs> I'm all right. That's a surprisingly subtle and effective jump scare, Geist. I wonder if... Oh yeah, baby, there's my M rating. Let's fucking go! The boss fight isn't quite so fun. It's pretty easy to dodge the projectiles and the painfully stock monster noises are a little suspect. Cap is just standing on the other side of the bridge doing nothing. I guess we'll leave the monster fighting to the chemists and theoretical physicists, right? I shoot at the monster for long enough for it to leave. Cap says, we'll talk about what the hell that thing was later. Yeah, okay, thanks for nothing. I didn't shoot my foot off. Since we got what we came for, it's time to leave. Let's get you topside, sir. That monster was a lot more carpenter than Raimi. <laughs> oh, there we go. Parker. Are you okay? Oh God, what are you doing? Oh. Believe it or not, Raimi survives this, and they hook him up to a machine that makes him have Corvus pain sounds. Stock sounds, am I right? A demon portal gives him a golden shower, which separates his soul from his body, so now... Yeah, he's kind of dead. He's mostly dead. With all due respect, sir, why are we bothering with the civilian for the separation experiments? Compassion, Rourke. That's rather uncommon for a mercenary. Don't get me wrong. I was gonna have a little weasel shot before you stepped in. You mean shot more? I still think we need someone with combat experience. As I recall, most of your professionals were driven mad. It's time we tried something different. Our training simulators will give him all the skills he needs. When they are complete, he won't even remember his name. Don't worry. Everything is fine. In fact, everything is perfect. You have ascended to something greater than what you were. Explore your new surroundings. You're safe 
and free. Okay, I am a ghost that feeds on plants. That's not exactly a health bar down there. That's just the time I can spend outside of a body. It ticks down very slowly. Oh, look. A beautiful animal. See how slowly the world moves now. You may have thought this game was a first-person shooter, but if I got news for you, this is an action-adventure puzzle shooting horror possession game with, and I know I keep calling this bullet time and I'm making a concentrated effort to stop, slow-mo. While you're outside of a body, everything moves slower. Oh god, that rabbit does not sound like it's having fun. Very good. Now try leaving the animal and exploring. The world is peaceful. Reload your weapon. This is Kill Them, your new Kill Them All home. home. Kill Them All? You don't have to tell me twice. Due to ghost-related mechanical failure, the simulation ends. Hello, Gigi, my spirit guide through the not-creepy corporate simulation teaching me to kill, whose canned dialogue is really unsettling. Rainy. Or the even worse... <laughs> hey, last year I met a ghost girl, too. It didn't go well. It would have gone way worse if I'd played to the end of Fear 2. Turns out we can ghost through specific walls and possess machines as well as living things. Like this little shooting game that doesn't make horrified, painful noises when I take it over. And this bucket. But most importantly for this game, an explosive crate. Gigi tells me that I can possess humans too, but I have to scare them first. Oh, I'll scare them. And Gigi's like, I'm too small to do this. Take this janitor. That does not look fun. Hello? Is someone there? Listen, I'm all by myself down here and no one will give me a straight answer. They just told me to activate my barrier. And if anyone comes up acting suspiciously to shoot them on sight, what's going on? Nothing. Everything, Everything is fine. fine. In, In fact, fact Everything, Everything is, is perfect. perfect. We take this janitor for a ride. We need him to be able to do human stuff like open doors. The game is actually really good at teaching you all of its mechanics quickly. I need to do the same machine sabotage that Gigi did to scare this guard so I can possess a human with a gun. This lets me see their memories also. I learned that my best friend's going to get the separation treatment too, so I have to go and save him. Dogs can sense people who are possessed, so you have to be careful around them and oh my god, that is the cutest little 6th gen pupper I've ever seen in my life! How do you do, fellow living humans? Well, they just killed one of their buddies to get me out. I'm sure they wouldn't do that. Yeah, okay, this means kill everyone but the dog. I don't know a lot about guns, but even I know that's not right. Enemies in this game still go down with a single bullet, and you have infinite ammo for all the weapons. It's a little strange, and puts the FPS gameplay into the back seat, which I'm here for. This is actually interesting. Already, I have to face off against Kord, Vokes' mercenary. He's come prepared, like they've been studying possession for a while, and they're not gonna make it too easy for me. The FPS sections are easy right now, but the game isn't about that. See, I have to dodge his energy attacks, and possess his grenades, and whittle him down, and if he kills me, and there are no viable hosts around, it's game over. I don't kill him, not yet, because he has some self-preservation instincts. Even if being attacked by a rogue chemist in a meat suit doesn't scare him enough to make him susceptible to possession, that makes sense. Especially since Gigi informs me that not everyone comes back the same. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes. That is better. Yeah, that's the one. Can I say that I think the objective, the thing that I'm killing all of these people for right now, to save my best friend, is just wholesome? Looks like, for the moment, I have to go somewhere that my meat suit can't follow. 
Thanks for the ride. Come on, boy. Don't make this harder on yourself. Did he get out again? Yeah, he got a little too close to Commander Rourke. You know how Rourke is around dogs. No kidding. Rourke almost used him for target practice yesterday. He fucking what? This sweet, innocent, jowly boy. I don't know who Rourke is yet, but he's definitely on my list for a possession. Like a really bad one. Pea soup, cross fucking, the works. I would never shoot a dog in this game, but I do need him. Hey, boy. This guard just opens the door for me because I'm a cute dog. Most realistic video game, 11 out of 10 bones, good boy. And then the game sends me into a rat. Hey, Civvy. Oh, god damn it. Hi, Cancer Mouse. Don't you want to ask me about my teleportation or the side effects to my teleportation? No. Do the sketch, Civvy. No, in a beautifully written transition, I return to the rodent possession- Do the fucking sketch! The audience loves the pestilent rodent! You need rats to get through very small spaces, and also to pick up this collectible that- Okay, if I collect another one, I unlock a new multiplayer option. Thirty seconds later, I pick up another one, and it tells me I've unlocked the office multiplayer level. That sounds fun, but I doubt I'll be covering it. So if you're looking forward to doing multiplayer in Geist, this is what you do to unlock that stuff. What I really need to do is possess a human because they can open doors and shoot things. So I need to scare another human. It turns out that fatal explosions are not scary. I have to possess a ladder, fall over, possess a fire extinguisher, and spray this man, and possess a steam valve and give this man second degree thermal burns. Yeah, I'll scare him. Okay, now we have thumbs and the ability to open doors. Except this one. It's the same goddamn hydraulic door with a green stripe. The game introduces other rules, too. If a host is already scared of something, say a haunted irrigation system, they won't go near it again. What confuses me is that I jump into the computer and make it do annoying pop-up ads. See, nothing really ever changes. And the irrigation system kind of pilots itself without my input, which is cool and fun, but also I'm not doing it. So I wish I was doing it in this piece of interactive entertainment. Sometimes Geist takes the reins and delivers its own scares. So understandably, the engineer won't go near the haunted irrigation system again. So I possess a fuse, roll it over, and we get to leave. Oh, this door has a retinal scanner on it. That's a good way to buy time while the next area loads. They've got my buddy Bryson hooked up into this machine now, too. And I can't allow them to turn him into a ghost that can do cool things like possess a science laser and destroy that machine. Seems like we're speedrunning the complete destruction of this company's supernatural research base. What just happened? Sir, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. The particle cannon it just lost control. We have a gas leak near the reactor room. Hazmat crews are on the way. All right, there's nothing suspicious going on with this gun turret. <laughs> hey, guy. Say, that's a nice meat suit. These guys are really on top of this, not trusting a guy standing in front of a pile of his friend's corpses. Engineer required. All right, thanks for the ride. This game is less a first-person shooter now, and more of an escalating series of deadly confidence games run on this evil organization, which is rewarding in its own way. I'm sure these rivets I'm installing aren't up to code. Ah, Jai Courtney, we meet again. Oh, a required host has died. Right, gotta protect the engineer. Not any of the soldiers, they're expendable. We need the engineer to break this glass, pull this switch, and shut down the reactor core, which I feel is below his pay grade, just as fighting a mercenary to the death using an industrial rivet gun is far above his pay grade. What I'm saying is that Geist is a terrible RPG. 
like Starfield. Sir, the rift is becoming unstable. It's about to collapse. Boost the power and expand that opening. Sir, we can't. We've lost containment. If we widen the rift... Don't do it. Boost the power now. Are you insane? We've lost the containment field. If the opening becomes any bigger, then God knows what will come through. Do it. Do it. Yes, sir. Catalyst laser firing. Okay, yeah, see, this is Rourke's I accidentally just summoned Baphomet through a hell portal in southern France face. Look, technically, I'm not making things worse. The portal's closed. The rift! It's... it's collapsed! We won't be able to perform any more separations. We've got bigger things to worry about. Yeah, my friend is still in trouble, and I'm guessing that he and I are ride or die with that handshake from before and the stuff in the manual. This game is written competently enough for me to believe it. Oh, where did you come from? Don't. <gasps> but sir, his body was prepped for separation. If I don't administer the counteragent soon, he'll die. Why are you dealing with this, Rourke? There's a giant demon running around, right? Oh my god! Rourke backhanded her with a closed fist. He hit her so hard that her teeth are clipping through her mouth. Holy shit! That's the dirtiest thing I've seen one of these characters do until like five minutes from now. Oh, <clears throat> sir? Hey, what are you looking at there? Oh, that's greasy. It's not cool to peep into women's showers. It is, however, totally acceptable to possess a shower head, burn a naked woman with hot water, scare the absolute hell out of a woman who just got her soul separated from her body the old-fashioned way. But I don't want to scare her like that. I can do the shower head thing again, but then... Now it's actually so much worse because I can possess mirrors. Oh my god! Okay, well, let's get some actual clothes on, because this feels slightly exploitative. You'll have to speak up, I'm wearing it. Oh, but there's Easter eggs in the locker room. Yeah, there's a GameCube. Shut up. I don't know what this is or why this works, but it's gameplay. After putting out some fires and doing some light extermination work, I collect the medicine Bryson needs and finally save him. Who are you? The handshake was plot relevant. <laughs> a guard comes in and Bryson is feeling so much better that he's able to slash the guy up with a scalpel on the spot. Good job. I am awesome at picking friends. I don't understand what's going on. Something to do with this whole ghost business I heard about? Good. You're all caught up. Let's go. Raimi, in Richardson's body, suits up, ties her hair back with a pencil, locks and loads, not Bryson, the soldier, but Raimi, the chemist, inside the body of Richardson, the medical assistant. Let's get the hell out of here and we'll figure this out later. Sure. Granted, all the guards still go down in one hit and this gun fires 10 rounds per second and I have infinite ammo and infinite grenades. Look, the aiming in this game is real weird. If the gameplay was mostly shooting, I would be livid. It's not long before another boss that blocks our shots and has a metric fuck ton of health shows up. It's not hard, though I did die a couple of times. The trick is throwing grenades in its hole. <laughs> I said, the trick is throwing grenades in its hole. Wait, what? I can only hurt it sometimes, but I have infinite ammo, so it doesn't matter. Never stop shooting. Fuck! It doesn't even die. It drops its shell, then excretes Bryson. I'm having a bad day. 
And so Vokes, remember him? He's hanging around in his office with plot-relevant photos of him and his sister, Gigi. Until that big demon from before possesses him and I guess fixes his legs. So now he's probably equally as evil, but twice as mobile. We're forced to leave Richardson behind and stop possessing and transforming a woman from a medical assistant to a badass warrior in Silent Avenger, which is probably someone's incredibly specific fetish. But it feels kind of Wonder Woman 1984 to me. But now I need to scare some rats, and this right here is the best way I can sell this game to anyone who might want to play it, because this is one of the peak geist moments, in my opinion. Yes, perfect. From here, the game will veer wildly towards LucasArts adventure game territory, which is why this is probably my favorite part of the game since the shooting is so scuffed. Huh. Rat poison. Deadly to rodents of all sizes. Why would they highlight the rat poison? Whatever, I'm sure it's nothing. We need a human-shaped meat suit. Yes, I have successfully covered you in sticky, disgusting Mountain Dew. You'll attract flies and halo streamers for weeks. Ha! Now it's code red, asshole! There's nothing more terrifying. So here's where we get into the adventure game territory, right? I have to go to the mess hall and mischievously burn the roast. Then blow the smoke at the chef. Oh, you gods! My roast is ruined! Throw some plates at the chef, typical ghost prank stuff. Oh, okay, who the fuck is the ghost here? Take the chef. Grab the soup from the pantry. Grab the rat poison. Mix the rat poison into the soup. <laughs> oh my god. What kind of chemist are you? We did all this to get Bryson through this room. We also have to radio for help. Using the radio does not kill anyone or turn anyone's insides into goop. That chef is going to jail if he's lucky. All right, I'm out of here. I can't leave without my buddy Super... Now I get to play Guardian Angel to my buddy Bryson, which sounds like an escort quest, but imagine an escort quest where you can willingly slow down time to a crawl in order to make tactical decisions, and then they just fuck that up by making you protect him while he's on a motorcycle, which is basically a turret section until you realize that if you don't move his motorcycle out of the way of things, as in steer for the person who is driving the motorcycle, he'll just crash into a fucking car. At this point, I'm convinced that Bryson doesn't want to live. Who's driving the truck that I'm shooting from? We're out of the adventure game puzzle section and into the action game puzzle section now where we're on a timer. But the timer slows down significantly like everything else when you're in ghost mode. And this is a decent puzzle. You need to possess a soldier with explosive charges who will blow up the anti-aircraft weapons that'll shoot down your evac chopper. You have to juggle turrets and environmental objects to deal with hazards, so it's kind of like an escort quest, except you can also control the person you're trying to escort. It's like an escort quest where I say, fuck it, I'll do it myself myself, instead of relying on the AI. Which is revolutionary! Every game should have done this after Geist. A ride gets here safe and sound, and then I shoot it down with a rocket launcher. Wait, what? Hey, wait a minute! It hadn't occurred to me that stealing someone else's body might be kind of a shitty thing to do. Like, that chef guy is definitely getting executed later, 100%. You've done well, my friend. That human could have ended our plans had he escaped. As for this ghost, keep him contained and outside the complex. All right, let's get back into the complex. We do this through some ruins with some questionable jumping puzzles. So you can either float as a ghost or you can float harder, which gives you a little more height. And I can almost get up through this hole in the wall, but I don't get enough height from this little table. I have to be on the big table that's farther away because the problem of having a video game with rules is that you can't have the ghost character be able to no clip everywhere. I get it. You get more detailed backstory about Vokes and his little sister. They were living with their Aunt Giselle in this place, prompting the question, what the fuck, Aunt Giselle? I came to live here with my brother, Alexander, when our parents died. My Aunt Giselle built the garden and playground for us. Alexander loved to sit in the tree and read his books on magic. They scared me, but he read them all the time. One day I was trying to play with him, but he didn't want to. 
I tried to climb the tree to get his attention, but I fell. I give this game a little credit for not showing the little girl braining herself on concrete, which is absolutely what happened. She is super dead now. My aunt wasn't here, so Alexander carried me into the tunnels. <gasps> my brother started reading from one of my aunt's books. Why does Aunt Giselle have the Necronomicon? Why any of this? God, it's so sad. And I heard a voice. It wasn't a nice voice. It was the same one I heard when we sealed the hole, Rainy. I tried to get out. When it touched me, I turned into what I am today. But when it touched my brother, something worse happened to him. It left a part of itself inside him. It turned him bad when he mean. Okay, this got a little heavier than I was expecting. So if you're keeping score at home, Necrovision told us that there's a massive portal to hell under northern France. And this game says there's one somewhere in southern France, expanding the uninhabitable parts of that country to basically all of it. Spreading into parts of Belgium and Luxembourg, and also in the southeast, possibly all the way into Italy. At least the Union Aerospace Corporation had the courtesy to do their hell portals off-world. After that brief interlude of sadness, we're back to killing monsters. First with a truck, then with a shotgun. I barely noticed I was having so much fun possessing things and giving people deadly internal hemorrhaging through poison soup. But a shotgun means power. Even this game knows that, and to demonstrate, our tentacled friend from before is back. That's right, we're doing chemistry, bitch. Looks like they've made the monsters significantly stronger than the humans for once, and I actually believe that they're threatening. I spoke too soon. We got special ops, boys. Fast ones. If you were wondering how they plan to deal with the problem of ghosts who exist entirely in slow-mo, well, here they are. These guys aren't fucking around. They move like Unreal Tournament bots. I have no way to defend myself, and as soon as I make it back to my body, they bust my ass and send me back to the simulator. The bolts would have had my head if they'd have killed you, but it would have been worth it. I promise you this. Once you've been retrained, and this whole summit thing is over with, I'm gonna personally pull the plug on you. Yeah, well, fuck you too. I'm gonna come back here and give you a backhand in the ball sack. This machine is designed to train these ghosts, alter their minds so they become submissive and obedient. Quite impressive, really. This human world has changed since we were last here, my friend. And it will change again. Oh, what a dick. You know he doesn't need the chair anymore and he still cruises around in it. Gather the other spectral operatives in the auditorium. I have a change for Project Zed that will make this world a haven for us. Oh yeah, Vokes, or the demon controlling Vokes right now, has a plan to take over the world. We get trained to carry it out. You know what, the brainwashed ghosts possessing high-ranking political figures to sow chaos and discord into the world isn't the worst idea? This was the mid-2000s, so the idea of the world being thrown into chaos was novel and something we were ostensibly trying to prevent. So little of this game takes place in the simulation, just this section and the one earlier where you took over the rabbit, that I'm surprised they put so much effort into it. They made the simulation bits, plus some kind of fake wireframe version of it for glitch effects. That's pretty good. I know it's not real wireframe because it's all made of, like, actual 3D shapes. Like all the shooting in this game, the sniping is a bit awkward, especially the zoom. The game is dropping thermal vision and all of this stuff that we're never gonna see again for the sake of the narrative, and that's just so goddamn cool. The later section where I have to prevent soldiers from exiting the building is less cool, since the shooting is odd and doing it at a distance without a sniper rifle is a bit of a pain. This game was not created as a shooter first and foremost, and it really shows. The difficulty spikes in this section significantly because of this. With the aiming the way it is, you kind of have to move to get the enemy in your crosshairs. The final part of the simulation has you killing people in a building to eventually find and possess a target. Hey, didn't this gun work way better when I was using it before? And not just because the enemies took one hit to the hair and ragdolled while these guys take significantly more punishment, it fired faster too. And the enemies have the same gun, which seems a lot more accurate in their hands than mine. The simulation sucks. I escape when the lab is attacked by these monsters, showing that humans do not, in fact, stand up very well against them, even when they have shotguns. We're doing non-combat again for a while and, uh, oh, for fuck's sake.
I have some fun terrorizing some scientists. First, you do it collectively. Then they run away and you do it individually. Geist will now indulge in its schlocky horror movie stuff for a while, which is just fine with me. This is where the game's strengths lie, and I think the designers know that. There's some fun ways to scare the scientists, but my favorite's tampering with the microscope slide. This implies that ghosts can physically manipulate things on a cellular level. Or maybe just the ghosts of biologists. This is the weapons research wing of the facility because each of these scientists has their own weird weapon that's been created using monster bits. One is a flamethrower, one is some kind of electrical weapon, and the one that I choose to take with me out of here is a prototype RPG with some kind of tentacle in the chamber. Ah, crap. Hey, I recognize those balls. The boss had them. Yeah, the rolling one. I wonder what that tenacious little shit is up to- Oh god! Oh sweet Christ! Okay, I think it's finally dead. The scientist is gonna wake up later from being possessed and it's gonna be really, really confused. And half dead. Vokes is planning to set his ghost army loose on a summit in Paris. Both spec op teams will be ready to leave shortly. I've tripled security around the command center and the helipad. No one is to have access except for you and myself. And you know what that means. We're gonna have to possess Rourke here. Obviously not Vokes. I think he's currently occupied and still in that goddamn chair. And I'm wondering how I'm supposed to scare this guy who works with ghosts professionally. I tried the old ghost sheet gag and everything. What? <gasps> Eyes are playing tricks on me. <laughs> Nothing. Didn't move the needle an inch. But wait, because there is one thing he's afraid of, if you'll remember. You know how Rourke is around dogs. So we have to find a dog. That is, after we find the animal trainer's pet rat, who we have to scare with a trap. And since the rats yearn for death, they're attracted to the traps. And navigating around them becomes extra difficult, so I use other rats and walk them right into the traps to deactivate them, which is kind of fucked up when I stop and think about it, so I won't. The animal trainer, Kira, is much easier to scare. <coughs> And I guess because they won't let a dog through security alone in this area, I have to awkwardly toss dog biscuits and have Fandomir drag me by the leash to where Rourke is. This is painful. Oh yeah, he just started mag dumping on me. This is what you get, Rourke, for trying to shoot the dog and for helping some weird guy try to take over the world with ghost slaves. We go grab some fancy speed armor and a uh, mini, mini gun, and we're off to the races. This speed upgrade has to be activated and it slows everyone else down but you. Because of the new soldiers with better armor and weapons, it becomes 100% necessary for your survival to be able to have super speed. That's right, the game that's already somewhat lighter on combat than I expected felt the need to change things up a bit. It's fine, it's fun to toggle the speed power up between killing soldiers. Because the soldiers can aim really well, you need to either be able to kill them quickly or make them kill you slower. The game chose the second option. Until the fast soldiers from before show up, who are now regular speed when you're fast because they've got the same armor on that speeds them up. 
but you're also uh, going still i'm having fun even if i have to aim with this wonky auto targeting and analog sticks Hey, where are you going? I need that body back. This one is old and scared of adorable innocent puppers and I can't live like that. Oh, that was really easy. I guess getting into a gunfight with someone using my body would be the worst way of getting it back in one piece. So the demon takes Rourke and I fill him full of holes instead. How nice of that demon. I'm gonna send his family flowers to put at his grave. Wait, where did he go? Yeah, wait, why did the boss meter refill? Ah, looks like you've got the same weakness as Vokes. Stairs! And grenades. All right, we got our body back. We got fancy armor. We got a minigun. I think it's smooth sailing from here, kids. We've retained the ability to possess things so I can take control of this anti-aircraft gun and take down the helicopter that's gonna deliver these mercs to Paris. Simple enough. Seriously? Fine. Ha! Huh. Looks like all you ghosts are shit out of luck. Where are you gonna go now? Not Paris, huh? <laughs> what in the absolute goddamn cheap is a Boston Dock whore fuck is this? So I restart the checkpoint, which means I have to destroy both of those helicopters again because this is still a console game. And everyone who played this probably restarted this part because we didn't know what was happening. The ghosts come in and instantly possess you. That makes sense. You need to use the grenades to kill them. Fine, I get that. However, you have to fight a lot of these guys before you find another checkpoint. And to get them off you, you have to smash the A button so much that I was worried about my controller. If you don't, they take you to the nearest lethal thing like the flaming wreckage of a helicopter, and kill you. I found the best strategy was standing in this little fenced-in area and shooting grenades out because they send you in a straight line towards death instead of being able to navigate. I guess they suck at possession. They are exceedingly obnoxious enemies and they hang around for the rest of the game. Not that there's much left of it. You plow through some elite soldiers in these ruins before coming upon a completely unexpected boss fight with some statues. Simple shoot weak points, use speed when they charge you. And once they're dealt with, you can go deal with folks, who is now flying while in the chair. I hate him so much! He really is a dick with these damn ghosts possessing me and tossing me into the fireplace. Alright, time to reunite this family by killing this prick. The final, final battle in this boss parade is between your spirit form and this demon, and I hate it. You have to shoot him with spirit balls and navigate up and down to avoid his attacks, and it probably looks like I'm doing a pretty bad job, because I am, but keep in mind that I'm also being dragged up and down by the game while I'm trying to fight him. I thought my controller had finally broken from all those ghost QTEs. It annoys me way more than it should, because up until the last half hour or so, this game was really fun and interesting and creative, and now I'm playing a much worse version of that game. And the auto-aim still sucks! It's not impossible, just unpleasant. I feel like I'm artificially handicapped by the design and how nothing before this part was anything like it, so I'm going in completely blind. Everything then explodes, Gigi saves her brother's soul, Bryson is still alive, somehow, and so is Richardson, and so is Phantom! The dog lived! Dog Trainer is dead, though. 
Game ends on a happy note, I guess, and aside from that last stretch cock and ball torture, that game was really fun. I'd recommend it if you can get it emulating properly. I'm not gonna go tell you to buy an old Nintendo console and then track down a physical copy of a game from a studio that was shut down over seven years ago. As for me, I'd like to wish you all a happy Halloween. May your games be spooky and your stomach sick from candy that you stole from children. Hey, Civvy. Aren't you forgetting something? Yeah, you guys want to send Cancer Mouse back? We can't send him back. Teleporter only works one way. Also, he's got a demon now. You'd be surprised how much that happens. Really? Would I? Didn't you do this to me like two years ago? No. Alternate timeline. But... No, because... I don't know if he's right. You got half your brain missing. Don't tell me what timeline we're in. You got me possessed two years ago and made me do calls to action. I hate telling people to like and subscribe. No one wants to hear that shit. They're here for the jokes, and some of them, I guess, are here for Cancer Mouse. That reminds me. I think it's time we talked about the conflict between... Creep, 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 possessed.